All right, so I'm Oscar Warner, I'm president of Toby Tech. So Oscar, what are you showing here at CES 2018? So we're showing uh, new VR demos. We have an extreme demand for VR, so we show some new experiences in, in the VR context. What's it been like seeing the evolution of this eye tracking over these last 15 years? It's been a very, very exciting field. We've been doing this for 15 or 16 years right now, and we've seen it go from just like um, single selling to researchers, very expensive things, to people with disabilities, and now having real traction in, in, a, in, in a wide array of consumer fields. So it's been a super exciting field, a super exciting journey, and we feel it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger for every year that we're here. So talk about some of the new demos here you showed us with the HTC Vive in particular. So we're showing demos uh, based on the implementation we've done in the HTC Vive, um, uh, which are demos on how you can interact with various forms of interfaces in VR as of today. Um, the first one is a home theater setting where we compare interacting with a pointer arrow and a touchpad controller in a, in a, in, in, in a, in a home theater setting where you can really feel that the interaction becomes more fluid and even um, and, and feels more natural when you add eye tracking. So what really happens there is that you can you can almost remove an entire step of interaction. So instead of saying one, I look at an item I want to select, two, I point to it, and three, I click, you can just do one, I look, two, I click. And that will feel, like I think you've done experience today, feel a lot better. So a lot of consumers look at eye tracking as sort of a gimmick, but it's actually, it's ramping up speed. You guys have had your eye tracking software in multiple laptops as a standalone product, and now you're planning on eventually implementing it into VR headsets. Talk about how, for example, for someone who's never experienced eye tracking, talk about what it is, because I know it's hard to describe if you haven't experienced it. So our view is eye tracking is fundamental to any VR or AR experience. It is, it is that profound. And the reason for that is it brings interaction back to natural. It can do that in many different aspects. I talked about it shortens the interaction sequence, so you can interact faster and more fluid. Um, another part is every social interaction. Today, when I speak to you now, I'm looking at you. Um, if you would do, if you ever have a multi-character or a multiplayer game in VR, um, characters would not, our two characters would not establish eye contact. If we were a multiplayer game and I was sitting like this and talking to you, in a multiplayer game without, without eye tracking, my character would be looking straight like this. It would not look at you, it would not make eye contact with you, because there is no idea if I'm speaking to you or to the other person straight ahead of me. And as you and me know, eye contact is an extremely powerful thing, powerful thing for humans to establish contact. Aside from gaming, what other implements do you see eye tracking? Because for example, a lot of cruise ships and theme parks have switched to touchscreen interactivity. interactivity. Um, where do you see eye tracking fitting into that in the future? Yeah. So we see, eye, we see eye tracking, or if I make it even broader, user facing sensors. Because what eye tracking is, it's really a sensor that is facing the user to make the device, whatever it is, understand the user. We see an extreme growth of that in many, many different areas. We see it obviously in AR, we see it in VR. We do it in PC gaming with Alienware and Acer, but we see it also in Apple's new iPhone, iPhone X. What did they do? Well, they implemented a user-facing sensor, which does two things. It does face ID and emojis. And their own tagline is, what can be more natural than touch? Well, just a look. That sensor is really, it's a way for Apple to understand what's going on in the user in front of them. We see it from Microsoft, they're implementing um, Windows Hello sensors in computers to log in. That's also user-facing sensors or Microsoft has implemented Gaze or eye tracking into Windows Core OS for accessibility. That's also a user-facing sensor. Or you see it in the automotive industry where, where cars and trucks are implementing drowsiness detection and distraction detection. That's also a user-facing sensor. And that's all part of the same trend. Devices will not be blind. Devices as of today will understand users because then they can make all the interfaces more, more, more fluid. How far away from how far away are we from seeing an integrated eye tracking uh, hardware in VR headsets? Uh, we have made public statements that we, that we believe. We're never going to say it's our OEMs or our customers that will, that will announce the launch dates. Uh, but uh, we believe that we'll be consumer eye trackers on the market in the end of, of 2018 and, and, and during 2019. And as president of Toby, where would you like to see eye tracking five years from now? 
I would like to see eye tracking or user-facing sensors in all devices. I think it's absolutely fundamental for all devices to understand their users. Today, devices are blind. They know where you are, they know what you say, um, they know what you touch, uh, they know in what direction you turn them since you got a gyro, but they have no in appreciation or understand what I see and what I did not see. That is going to change. If people wanted to find out more information about your eye tracking software as well as your hardware uh, and a list of compatible games, where would they go? So uh, all that information is on Toby.com. We have Toby Gaming. Uh, there you list all the all the all the uh, all the games that, are in, that, that support eye tracking. And on Toby.com you have uh, more information about how to integrate eye tracking into your device.